I'm your host, Locum23. You're joining me for the review of Star Trek Picard Episode 1, Remembrance. But before we beam right into that, as well as the spoiler section, let me go ahead and say the following. I'm a big Trekkie fan, as you can tell, and anyone who knows me, and I would say before jumping in the series, please go watch Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, this isn't like Star Trek Discovery. You're going to want to know what led up to the events of this. It will, you know, give you tidbits, hints. You'll get to know the characters that are going to be in the series and whatnot. Honestly, and wholly, I'm going to say this, I suggest at least once in your life watching all of the Star Trek series, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, etc., just to familiarize yourself with the characters, the crews, and just everything else. And then, so when something like this comes along, you're like, oh, I'm fully prepared. I would say also the Next Generation's movies, I believe there is three of them. Um, I would say go watch those as well. It will familiarize yourself with the um, issues that are about to happen in just episode one. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this. Beam me up, Scotty. So, the pacing of this is slow steady gradual um pacing had a little bit of hiccups here and there but for the most part it was very star trek e um i i want to say they could maybe do some improvements find the rhythm i think that's what they're kind of doing with all the producers and all the people writing and everything i think they're trying to find a rhythm and I have to say this, this is unknown territory. This is this is going where maybe, I, I want to say they're taking hints, they're taking things from the Star Trek online game, um, but for the most part, this is going where Gene Rodden Roddenberry had never gone before, where we are taking his vision, may he rest in peace, further than ever before um it's it's it for for me as a trekkie as well as everyone else who watches the series and whatnot it's it's something you wish humanity would become you know this this fantastic organization um to explore the galaxies and wonders and technologies and everything else it's just a fantastic um series and 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 it's where a lot of my ideals and everything have come from um so with that being said the story is not bad it makes you uh, it was kind of like a teaser for what's to come like it leaves you with a lot more questions and it's very un star trek for that uh typically with every episode in star trek there would be the mystery or the question and then there would be the answer given in the same episode. In this, we're giving more uh, hoops and ladders and just everything else to jump through or hurl through. And it's like, okay, like who, what, when, where, and why? And you're left with a million questions. And especially the end of it was just like, and it's just episode one. The end of it was like, okay. Like, it was it was interesting that um, the beginning of the episode, we start off in the um, beautiful, uh, you know, Enterprise D, which, uh, if you watch the movies, was destroyed. But there are other, other um, basically, Enterprises um, that are out there. They're just typically named other classes and whatnot. But it is, it is the Galaxy-class starship. It is, you know, it is the Enterprise D was the original first one, and then there was all the others that took place. And so for a while, if you watch Star Trek The Next Generation, um, you know, this was the big baddie. This was the most fantastic ship that Starfleet had. And I'd say um, if you look back at um, a lot of the other movies or shows... We would always look back at the Excelsior class or the Constellation class. We always go back to, you know, kind of like looking back through the hourglass or, or however you want to put it, um, that, hey, you know, this is where we came from. So it starts in with him and Data and, and whatnot on the ship, and it's a memory, and they're by, you know, the U uh, Topia Planitia yards, and apparently, you know, Romulus is gonna, you know, be hit with a supernova, they're building an armada, the whole nine yards, and then these synthetics, which are kind of like data, 
um, go and attack it, destroy it. They destroy it so bad that it's still burning to this day, which is nearly two decades later. Which, I mean, it makes sense. So, synthetics, I mean, it looks like, from a Star Trek Next Generation perspective, they went and they made a bunch of datas. But um, the synthetics also are something that, in a few minutes later in the story, we meet Dodge. Um, after Picard kind of just snaps, which we'll get to here in a second. Um, long story short, she is a positronic brain in a human body, which everyone and their mother thinks is far-fetched. I've heard it from the fans. I've, you know, some of the other YouTube content creators that I kind of like, okay, I can respect your opinion or I can disagree with your opinion. I'm going to say this. You may have forgot where we left off with Deep Space Nine, where there was genetically modified acceptance. We look at Dr. Um, Julian Bashir, who was okay for having exceptional mind. He also had exceptional athletic abilities. He was able to do things that no normal human being was able to do. That is not unfamiliar. You look at Khan from the reboot of Star Trek, um, and Khan was a superhuman. He was able to jump and fall and just take on tons of people and take blasts to the, to the face without even batting an eye. And he was, you know, genetically modified. It's not, it's not mind-blowing in the Star Trek universe if you actually remember the episodes, if you remember the science. Um, so moving forward is, or moving back, may I say, Picard has an interview. And it was about the remembrance of the Utopian Planitiards and, and him being an admiral and, and all these other things. And him stepping out of the limelight of Star Trek, which to me, him becoming an admiral was already like, whoa. Um, because Picard was always a person who was like, I'm more comfortable. I'm more wanting to sit in a captain's chair and go and explore and do all those other things than ever becoming an admiral he himself said that several times through all of all of the next generations so it looks like maybe sometime somewhere in in that time frame after data died he was just like you know what i'm gonna become an admiral i'm gonna take a step back and uh you know then then because of utopia planitia yards and losing of almost a hundred thousand souls um picard was like yo i'm done i'm done um, because of the synthetics or datas attacking, um, and destroying the, you know, the, the shipyards and Mars burns to this still day after two decades and the whole nine yards, they pretty much disassembled, um, the, if you watch the mo last movie, the data replacement, um, they disassembled him and then they banned all synthetics and all this other thing so we come into this um picard wrestling with that and saying you know this this was stupid like they started questioning about data and they're like did you ever you know question him as a commanding officer did you ever question or have like loss of faith in data and he's like no and you know that that star that starfleet is not what it should be and i can honestly say for any Trekkie out there who has watched these series and everything, and after everything that's happened, and um, I believe it is Section 31, um, was a secret Starfleet organization that was able to go out and assassinate whoever they wanted, uh, kill or, you know, set things up, um, you know, whatnot for the benefit of Starfleet. The uh, Romulans had the Tal Shiar, the Klingons were just Klingons, but they only, they started to be smart and develop their own Klingon secret, like, agency and things like that. Um, and then as you leave with Voyager and everything else, there are other entities at play. There are um, several species that we talked about in Generations and whatnot that are still out there that are super, super powerful and whatnot. And then they're throughout Generations alone. 
let alone Deep Space Nine, let alone Voyager, there was always looking and making Starfleet look bad. There was always undermining. There was always corruption in Starfleet and everything. So again, I, I'm 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 smacking back at some of these people going, oh, come on, Picard would never say... No, no, Picard actually did. Picard, a numerous times, um, would go and break protocol because he didn't believe that it would uphold what Starfleet was about. Um, he broke the Prime Directive more so than most captains did um, because it wasn't what he saw, what Starfleet could embody, what it was, the whole nine yards. Um, and let's put it this way, Picard was a shamed captain in, in the first place after, uh, Wolf 3459, uh, like, he was a shamed captain, everybody hated him, and the whole nine yards, you look at Cisco versus Picard, and Cisco had a hate for the guy, um, why didn't they ban Picard from Starfleet? So, it's a hypocrisy that they banned synthetics or, or androids, things like that, from anything i mean they're going around killing these people clearly by what the events throughout this episode are happening they are literally um going around and hunting these people down because they're living normal lives and they're not they're they're not activated as one of the guys who was going to 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 assassinate um this their girl he was like she hasn't activated yet and they and they i'm assuming they were going to kill her they had killed her boyfriend so i'm assuming you know um, they came in, and they're 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 funny. It, it, it's funny because they're all dressed in black. It reminds me the minute I saw, I was like, "Oh, Section Thirty One," and they're all dressed in black. They're they've got these really cool weapons that we've never seen before, and it's like, and they and they literally outright killed someone. Boom! Right there, threw a knife right in his chest. Boom! Right in his heart. He was psh, dropped dead on the floor, and. It was something that, yes, isn't Star Trek, it isn't Starfleet, but it is. Um, so, with that being said, um, you know, this all takes place on Earth. Doesn't leave it, except for the end, which we'll get to here in a minute. But, we got this woman who then activates... In the midst of this, they got a bag over her head and the whole nine yards, and they're probably gonna end her. Or who knows, kidnap her? I don't know. Um, I, I feel like figuring everything else, they would have just kidnapped her. But maybe that's what they were going for. I don't know. Um, that part is a little goofy. It's a little off. It's like the writers couldn't decide: do we kill her? Do we kidnap her? What are, what are we going for here before we activate her? Um. And it almost feels like the writers kind of like question that, like, should we kidnap her? And then they, so she's important to someone. Like, it kind of felt like the writers were questioning that in in this. You could kind of tell. Um, at least that's the vibe I'm getting. So she activated. She kicked these guys' asses. She goes on, and she kind of has this telepathic connection with Picard. Everyone's like, well, she sees Picard. It's a memory. But it seemed like a telepathic connection. Or maybe it was because she had activated, maybe it was her memories activating. I don't know, it's one of the two. Um, but she goes and seeks out Picard. And she finds him on his uh, Chateau Picard, de, de, uh, Picard. And um, he's sitting there with his dog, number one. Super cool. It's laid back, you know, it's the captain, he's retired. He's, he's just, you know, he's... he's and I, I like some of the things where they, they showed, you know... They were like, "How did you sleep?" And he's like, "The dreams, you know." And he, he was talking about the dreams, and 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 he he mentioned he just didn't want to wake from them because I I myself have been like that, and I've I've to my community um, I've talked about that where you just I have such immersive and visual and incredible dreams that are surpass this life that I'm living right now that I'm like I don't want to wake up, and there's some days I just kind of like get up, I'm like, what's up? And then I'm like, mm, no, I want to go back to that dream. Um, that's, that's just me. But they kind of show he's a tormented man, you know, all these incidences around him and everything. And then, like, he meets her, then they start discovering, then she runs away, and then he starts seeking um, out information. 
because he gets this feeling, he gets this interesting, like they, they discuss and one thing. And so he goes to the Daystrom Institute where he wants to talk to Maddox and, and some other people who were dealing with positronic brains and also some other questions. And one of the questions is the first question he even looked at him and said is, is it possible to put a positronic brain in a human? And they're like, oh, you're fine. No, you're being serious. No way. Um, and it's something that's so far out there that it's like, there's no way. This is where I'm going to go with genetics and making it possible. And and people are like, well, there's no way she did that. She was throwing people and she was doing all this and she was being badass and she was moving faster than most humans and all this other thing. Do you not remember Khan? Do you not remember like the fact that we as human beings, I myself right now, if I see a kid, say a child or, or my son or, or anyone really, and it, and it breaks me mentally, it breaks that wall. It's, it's, it's people have recorded it. People have shown it. people lifting, you know, a, a one ton vehicles off of people. And it's like, do you really like, if we unlock that through the genetic modification, is it that far fetched? And we're talking about Star Trek. It's all about science. You know, it's not Star Wars, mythical bullshit. It's Star Trek. It's science. And that's something that they've always constantly discussed in this whole thing. And here we've got these all new upgraded technologies. And, and, and you know, in Deep Space Nine, we talked heavily about genetic modification and things like that. And the downfall and benefit of it. And, I mean, <laughs> really? So is it that far-fetched? Another thing is, is people... Um, pointed out the Romulan blood. Apparently now, because these were Romulans that she was fighting, um, which I don't know how this works, and it makes you wonder what's going on. Like, did, 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 like I'm going to go to the end real quick and say, the Romulans are working out of a Borg cube. Now I'm going to go to Star Trek Online and go, well, we did become allies with the Borg. Now I'm going to come back to this and go, are we visiting that? Or did we take the Borg technology and we're now using it and we're going, huh, cool. Which then I'm going to go ahead and say, is it that far fetched for them to have venomous blood that are either venomous to humans or venomous to synthetics or venomous to whatever maybe they're fighting when you have genetic modification? I want to go ahead and remind you of one thing. Remember, if you are a Trekkie, Voyager came from the Alpha Quadrant with a bunch of knowledge. Borg knowledge. Species 8472 knowledge. Remember, Species 8472 is an organic being. That, according to the holographic doctor, said they are close to humanoids. Their body had adapted to the venom secretion inside of themselves. That, they were able to attack another human being that wasn't, you know, building up an immunity or wasn't adapted to their their acid in them. And they would literally infect the person and everything else and start either changing them or killing them. Is it that far-fetched? We're talking about over two decades of researching that and the Borg nanites and the species 8472 and everything. It's not that far fetched. This is, this is, see, this is, I'm using this brain. I'm envisioning all, uh, cause like I said, I've watched Star Trek so many times that it's not even funny. And I kind of make it a tradition every like half a decade or a decade to literally sit down and watch all of Star Trek just from beginning to end, just to refresh it and just to be like, man, that's such an incredible thing. And it's something that I want. I, I wish we lived in a time like that. But anyway, with that being said, the Romulan spit his blood at her, which you've got to assume. I mean, this dude, this dude just up chucked. So you've also got to wonder, OK, is there a possibility since he knew he was probably going to go in and deal with this chick and she was beating everyone's ass? Is there a possibility that he put like a took a cyanide pill? Now, what happens when you take a cyanide pill? The, the, the stuff starts, starts creeping and, and, and you start foaming and everything. Okay. So maybe, just maybe, he took something, knew he was going to lose a fight, 
I'm going to take you with me in a way of, I can't mention the word because YouTube will literally just screw this video over completely, but it's where I'm going to take you down with me. You know, why is that so far-fetched? Like, the new guy knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to get his ass whooped. I'm going to take you down with me. My, my target... This is... Section 31 literally did this crap. You think it's far-fetched for the Romulans? Really? Did you not watch Star Trek at all? Romulans went and did that crap all the time. Klingons did that shit all the time. I don't... I can't actually think of one single species that was on the opposite of the Starfleet that wouldn't go and do the... Boom... Like... We literally had Kardashians who did it. We had, not the Kardashians, the Karda Kardashians. Um, ugh, God, that name. We had, um, oh man, I'm trying to remember the species. Uh, Jim Hadar. The Jim Hadar would do that shit all the time. Oh, I'm getting, the whole purpose was to kill your opponent. Like, and why is this why is any of this mind-blowing to some people i don't understand it's like they've never like maybe you need to really go and refresh your memory with star trek i i think this this was a like me for me i'm 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 curious i'm curious with what they'll do i'm curious with where they'll go i'm curious like i'm hoping they don't screw this up kind of like they did to star trek discovery which to me was just it was okay to watch. It was kind of entertaining, but at the same time, I'm like, no, this is, this is, this is, no, this is. I think that's why they kind of did it before the Kirk era, and they kind of just fiddled with it. Um, this is something where I don't think Sir Patrick Stewart is going to let them kill or ruin his character. I, I, I have too much respect for the man. To be like, yeah, he's going to go in there and he's going to let him completely obliterate who Picard was. No. Um, even, you know, Patrick Stewart said, this is going to, like, for fans who, I, I, I give you the best advices, just, just wait. See what comes. Just, you'll, you'll see. And it'll be worth it. It is. I can, I can, like I said, there are so many questions on where this goes. Did we ally with the Borg? Are we able to use Borg technology? You know, is there the species 8472 acidic thing? Is there genetic modification? Like, is there, like, who's behind all this? Like, who, what, when, where, and why? Like, there's so many questions, and there's no answers. There literally was no answers at the end of this episode. Which makes you tantalized to go, please give me answers next episode, or I'm going to lose my mind. Please? Like, it made me curious. Curiosity killed the cat. Well, curiosity is going to kill this cat if I don't can find out what's going on. So with that being said, um, again, the pacing had a little bit of issue. Everything else was, was spot on. Um, I, though I look at Picard as Luke Skywalker... He, you know, retired. He became... I, I don't want to say, though, with Picard, he became complacent with his retirement. You can tell, and he talks several times throughout the entire episode, that he wanted, like... I mean, he, he, he went, and he was going to try and save everybody in Romulus, which is, which is interesting, and I think it has to do with Spock's father mind-melding with him, you know, his relationship with Spock. Spock himself, at the time, was working furiously hard to find a way to save Romulan... Uh, alone Romulus and everyone there and Spock was literally and figuratively on his way to Romulus when everything went to crap he was lost through time and space here we've got Picard he's gonna go save Romulus too and the synthetics and everything goes wrong because for a while there everybody questioned why no one else tried to save Romulus and a lot of people were like well because the Starfleet isn't, isn't as incredible as everybody thought, and they are, in a way, um, racist towards Romulans. 
and it's it that's that's let's be honest that was a big thing in star trek the next generation because one of the nurses aides um in sick bay to my knowledge because he wore the blue uniform i'm trying to remember his name but he was found through some trial that was going on that that pretty much this this woman came out of nowhere and was you know head hunting for anyone and everyone that had any secrets like she even tried to tear picard down and he gave one of the most fantastic speeches throughout history let alone in, in the star trek universe that you know should we judge a person based on their blood by by who they were born by the sins of their you know the whoever you know because uh, they're at one point or another the person was an enemy um it was it was just a fantastic speech and like he was completely discredited thrown out of starfleet etc because he had some romulan heritage and it's like man like so uh, the hate for romulans has always been there which is interesting because we've never really to my knowledge been ever in a big altercation with them we have with klingons we've never been in like they've always been sneaky and you know plotting and everything but we've never had an all-out war with romulans to my knowledge now if someone goes and quotes a fucking book down below i'm gonna be like Unless it was wrote literally by Gene Roddenberry, I don't care. Um, no offense, but uh, yeah. So there's a there's a, so many questions that I need answers to, and I think that's the point. Now, in episode two, just to give you a little tidbit for those who have stayed through this, is they are going to leave Earth. They are going to start going outwards and Riker and Deanna and seven to nine if you watch Voyager and 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 some other characters are coming out of the woodwork literally um the guy who oh man I don't remember his name they literally gave him a name data gave him a name actually on um Enterprise was um they, we're gonna meet him we're gonna meet his his now present self he used to be one of the, the the rebellious borgs who went against the borgs now another thing real quick that i totally forgot about was data so <clears throat> these synthetics right they're saying that data was one of a kind he was do people not remember that we literally had a couple episodes in star trek where we put data on trial to prove that he was one of a kind and he wasn't just a mass produced machine that or was could be a mass produced machine <clears throat> um because bruce maddox was going to take him tear him down to every single positronic wire to find out how he worked to mass produce him and so they ruled that he was a person number one so he was one of a kind data gave his life for others people go well lore lore was just like data no he wasn't data was one of a kind just like i'm one of a kind you're one of a kind um not everyone's wired the same keep that in mind especially in your brain you cannot duplicate this nice fleshy tissue thing inside your skull that is data his body was replaceable remember limbs were replaceable limbs were fixable i mean hell he was able to detach his arm he was able to detach his legs he was able to be completely and utterly taken apart he was able to operate everything from his neck here that was data if you remember his head was literally put on a table and he still was able to operate the enterprise full and and process faster than the best computer in starfleet so why are people so mind blown right now by the fact that we have synthetics that are comparable to data they seem as 
childish, as ignorant, as whatnot, as data, but at the same time, they are being raised as humans and then activated. Why is that so far-fetched? Like, we don't know anything yet. We don't even know if it's truly a positronic net or a brain that is in here. We don't fully understand or know that yet, do we? So everyone's jumping off of assumptions and everyone's doing all this other thing. And I just, I think people just need to do what Patrick Stewart said. Just, just give it a minute. Just let's see where we go with this. Um, because if anything, all they did was truly respect data in this so far. Um, now they took apart data B, um, and he, because the ban on synthetics, um, and remember, he was inferior. He didn't have as, as sophisticated as a positronic, positronic brain as Data. He was like an infant compared to Data. Um, so again, Data was vastly more sophisticated. He was able to do better. Then everyone goes, well, what about Lore? Remember, Lore was an evil psychopath who literally wanted to, and, and they could never figure out how to fix Lore. He, I mean, do you really want to go and make an evil synthetic? Maybe that's what they kind of did. Maybe they went and used what Lore was, may had these bad synthetics, but there was also good synthetics. You don't know. That's the whole point of the series, is to figure out all these and more questions. Then they talk about um, Data's daughter in this. Like, there's so many things covered. They talk about Data's daughter. Uh-huh. The problem is, remember Data's daughter? Data himself was... Let's, let's, let's go a little biblical here. Data himself was a god, correct? He was able to do things the Borg weren't, humanoids weren't. He was, he was, he was the Omega Particle out of everything. The only thing he wasn't able to do was escape death. We all die one day, don't we? With that being said, um, he created a daughter. He created a daughter with the assistance a little here and there, but mainly of himself, but of uh, Jordy. But for the most part, he did it himself. And he created his daughter, and for a while she lived. But it's kind of like, imagine this for a moment. You have a child, you've brought this child into this world, and you're trying to teach them. Trying to teach them to walk? Literally, that's what he did with her. You're trying to teach her to run. You're trying to teach her to talk. You're trying to teach her. He Data was having a child. However, there was a birth defect with his daughter. She was not able to handle all of this up here. He had transferred his positronic brain and everything into her. And because of it, she was able to do a couple things he wasn't. But her mind was not able to handle all of it, and she melted down. For hours and hours and hours, Data, this, this god, this master computer, worked tirelessly, while other engineers just couldn't keep up. They couldn't. Like, the degradation of her positronic net and brain was breaking down, and every time he would correct one path, another one would break down, and another one, and another one, and another one. People forget this. People forget this in the Star Trek Next Generation. I think people don't have such a good as memory as they think they do, especially some of these reviewers. And I'm just going to call you out. You guys are jumping like i get it you guys are hot off the star wars is was horrible and everybody's out to ruin your franchises and the whole nine yards i watched discovery it didn't fr ruin the franchise it was a prequel to everything i mean you look back at star trek enterprise you know with archer and everything Really? Is Discovery so far-fetched and so bad that when you compare it to Enterprise, not the Enterprise, you know, Next Gen, not Kirk. We're talking about the Enterprise with Archer, Captain Archer. So far-fetched and so bad, Discovery versus that? Like, really? Um, 
if you actually use this and actually know the lore of Star Trek, you would actually go, okay, so it's not so far-fetched to go, maybe they had made humanoid hybrids genetically modified to be strong, genetically modified to be fast, genetically modified to be smart, and then put a positronic net, keyword, net, not brain, to help do, 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 make you as as a, su superior to a Romulan, superior to a Klingon, and superior to a human. Is that really so far-fetched? Let alone, there is a possibility that they did use positronic brains. Again, it's a positive... It, 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 we ourselves, we don't even know the the limit of our brain, and that's what I started off with, you know, lifting the car off someone in the whole nine yards. Use critical thinking. That literally is what Gene Roddenberry wanted people to use. The brain. At the end of this, and now the beginning of Picard, it was all about this, wasn't it? It was all about this. It was all about this. Nothing else. I don't think people realize that, and I think people should. So, in a way, this encapsulates and continues on the legacy from Gene on at least a couple fronts. Was this perfect? No, not by any means. Was this horrific? No. I I, I want to say this was a good start to an unknown territory, to an unknown Star Trek. This is my opinion. I'm sticking with it. Um, I hate all the questions. The show is beautiful. The storylines were all over the place. So, you, again, this is, this is a puzzle piece in a giant jigsaw puzzle. So keep that in mind. So it's hard to rate the story. However, if a story truly does pique your interest, pique your curiosity, pique your brain, and it makes you think... Is it a bad story? To me, no. So, as much as I want to go yes, because it was all over the place, at the same time, let's 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 cautiously, as as once was said by a famous captain, let us cautiously go in to this unexplored galaxy, this unexplored universe, and see what is out there. Do not be Q. Do not tell me that I am going exponentially further than I should be and I should limit myself and stop, halt myself because you are a supreme being who was Q. And you, you, you tell me I should stop. That is humanity. That is Starfleet. That is what we stand for. To seek out unknown things. To explore unknown things. This is unknown. We are 20-some years in the future. We have no clue about technology. We have no clue about what has happened. We are still grasping on the story of Picard. What happened to go from being captain to now. There's so much here that isn't there. That is the point. But for the first time ever, does Star Trek deliver on one thing? It does not give you an answer immediately. It doesn't give you an answer in the same episode. Could you imagine Picard be over? This is supposed to be a series about one man. Yes, he's going to have teammates. Yes, he's going to have shipmates. Yes, he's going to have a mission. But this is a show... Not about the next generation. This isn't about Starfleet. This isn't about anything else. This is a story about one man. Who, in my opinion, is the greatest man and the greatest captain to have ever lived in the Star Trek universe. So, hopefully, I've touched your brains a little and you've peaked or you know hopefully some of these people have been like hopefully they'll be a little awakened and they'll say i can see your argument hopefully some of these people will be like wow i didn't think about that during my review or my review of on online or videos or things like that 
If you are a Trekkie fan and you agree with everything that I've said, or the hypothesis, the theories, or whatnot, or even just a fan in general, share this with them. Share this with your, your friends, your family, and whatnot. It's a good show. It's just one episode out so far, fam. Let's calm down, because you know what? If we were to judge every single Star Trek show that comes out off of one episode and just be like, this is horrific. This has no potential. This is going in the garbage chute. How dare you? And then you automatically also start blaming people. Like, I, you know, if that was the case, Robert Downey Jr. would have never had been acting and acting. We would have had a completely different Iron Man. If that was the case, Patrick Stewart would have never gone off of Broadway, let alone never been given the chance to do Broadway. Ian McCollin wouldn't exist. We would still be infantile people who go, no, you're not allowed to be anything other than straight. You know, we, 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 God damn it, the whole point of, and Star Trek is to open your mind and open your eyes, your ears, and just absorb things and to seek out, you know, everything. Keep educating yourselves. Keep, I mean, I just, just some of these people are just woof, woof. So I'm going to enjoy the show. If it comes out by the end of the show, I'm like, Ugh, I'll definitely keep you updated because I'm definitely going to keep doing the interviews. I hope you enjoy them. Um, but I'm going to. As a big old Trekkie, I'm going to keep talking about it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I want to give it a 7 out of 10, maybe an 8 out of 10. It's, it's in there because it makes me think. It makes me wonder. It makes me hope that this will finally deliver on what happened. I'm tired of prequels. You know what? I'm so f***ing tired of prequels. I'm so tired of going back. Let's go back before Kirk. Let's go back before Archer. Let's go back before... No! I... No! Stop it! If you have someone's vision, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! No. Gene Roddenberry had a beautiful, beautiful story. Stop it. No more. No more. Discovery, this is to you. No more. Let's let's visit the Kirk era at the very least. Let's go forward, okay? Apparently, according to Star Trek Discovery, they're going to be in the future tense. They're going to be so maybe this will kind of like rock the boat. Maybe maybe Discovery will play off of Picard and back and forth. Maybe we will develop kind of like you see with the the CW and Arrow and Flash and Supergirl and all this other shit. Maybe maybe just maybe we will have kind of like interconnecting shows that will be able to play off one another or at least learn from one another and learn from oh man Discovery did this bad let's do this better like competition as well as criticism is not a bad thing too but also critical thinking is critical thinking common sense is common sense um i don't know what else to say i i, I believe i have covered everything that happened in episode one my god there was a lot that happened and then there's also a lot of these reviews that are just like and then also the the other YouTubers and everything that just cynical, like, <laughs> whoo man, like oh it's the worst thing. I not just did one video. There's gonna be streams and there's gonna be more videos and there's gonna be and then you no just stop, just take a moment, take a breath, take a step back, just go. Here's my here's my opinions. I'm gonna put it out there. Maybe just maybe some of these people should have like actually critically thought instead of just harp on something harp on something harp on something because if you stand there and you just complain and you complain and you complain and you don't offer criticism you don't offer like i've done here if you don't offer alternative thinking uh, here um hypothesis theories things like that if you don't offer anything and you just complain well i'm gonna speak for myself here i don't know about you but i'm just tired of your shit and just shut the f up like, if that's all you're going to do is complain, and that's all you are as a person, is you just like to complain. <sighs> My god. Do you complain about having to take in oxygen every day? Like, man, because it, I mean, you have to work for it, right? You have to... <laughs> I just don't even know what to say anymore. People just like to complain. I don't get it. Um, I enjoyed this show. 
Hopefully you do as well. Let me know in the comment section below. If you agree to disagree with me, that's fine. Let me know your criticisms and things like that. But um, hopefully you watched it. Hopefully now, maybe you watched it. Maybe you agreed with some of them. And then you come over here and you're like, okay, he actually broke it down. Like a lot of these people who are doing their views on their YouTube channels and everything, they're not breaking things down. They're not critically thinking. They're not going, okay, this is within reason. This is not within reason. This is a little far-fetched. This is... At least I sat here and I broke it all down and I'm like, you know what, this is within reason. Yes, it's far-fetched. This is this, this is I'm willing to do that. But some of these people, like, I, I just hope like because people like to try and break things on purpose and just be like, aha, see I was right, and just and then they try and taint things, they try and plant the seeds and everything. And and while I respect, say for instance, um Doom's opinion on Star Wars and everything I am going to go ahead and completely disagree with him on this. He's a fellow YouTuber. Um, I'm going to completely disagree with him on his... He just... He hated on this. He hated on this episode. And that's his right. That's his opinion. But I don't hate on it, and I am a Trekkie. So don't believe every article out there right now. Like I said, if you have not watched Star Trek... Especially the next generation. That's all you really need to do. Like, unless you really want to know, like, Seven and Nine or other characters that are going to be coming. Watch Star Trek The Next Generation. Available on Amazon. If you need a site that, because you can't pay for Amazon, I'm sure someone will help you or you can have Google. But, long story short, go watch it. Go watch the movies. Come back. Watch Epicard again now. Watch it in sync ones. And be like... Okay, that makes sense. And then, again, Deep Space Nine covered the genetic modifications and everything else. Like, I can't push this enough. Like, if you take in all of Star Trek, it actually makes sense. It actually does make sense. And hopefully I've broken that down here in this video. Um, without further ado, I think I'm done. This is quite a lengthy review because I am very passionate about Star Trek. Like, not just do I respect Patrick Stewart, he did a good acting job in this in this episode. He brought back Picard, but in a different way. A this is twenty some years later. I'm damaged. This is I've gone and seen some shit. Um, I I want to see what they do. Maybe they can revive the old Patrick Stewart because he's like he. I remember one part. He says, "I've sat here content. I've done nothing." Now that feeling, bro. That's a mood. That's a mood in and of itself. Um, so hopefully, just hopefully, some of these people are like, they chill out. They're like, ho hopefully, some of them actually hear this criticism, or or at least go, okay. Now that it's broken down, I can I can at least understand that and respect that. You know, my sources say at least give something a chance. Episode 1 is out. I'm guessing episode 2 will be back and... Yep, and what's that? Uh, yep, okay. This review's gone on long enough. We should stop. All right, thank you. <laughs> so, without further ado, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoy. If you're new to the channel, I'll be covering more of this, as well as I do tons of voiceovers and whatnot. I do games. I stream on Twitch um, and things like that. So, feel free to check me out. Thanks for watching. Bye!